Free speech will cost you. Hey, Pro-Life Jen, I'm Kristen Hawkins. Thanks for tuning in to this How This Win This Week episode with the Explicitly Pro-Life podcast. Um, You know, Students for Life of America is certainly the type of organization um, that is thankful for free speech rights here in America, something that uh, most people across the globe do not have access or rights to. Um, But we have to remember that free speech will cost you. It's not free and you constantly have to, when you have a freedom, you have to constantly be exercising that freedom and ensuring that others uh, will allow you to exercise it. And you have to stand up for your freedoms. If you don't stand up for your freedoms, they can be easily taken away. And I don't think anyone has to look uh, much further than the COVID uh, vaccination mandate and everything that's gone on in the past year and a half to to really understand that freedom's not free and you have to fight for things or they get taken away from you very easily. Think about the churches uh, in California that were told they were no longer allowed to assemble uh, because of the COVID pandemic and who had to fight for, you know, free exercise of a religion and free assembly and, and you know, ultimately won because, you know, California is um, not um, a dictatorship as the governor likes to believe he is. But um, let's talk about abortion. We have to, as pro-life activists, be willing and ready and courageous enough to stand up for free speech rights or free speech rights, especially when we know our free speech rights are going to be taken away. That, inc- that means when you know you're going to face opposition, do it anyway. Don't cancel the event just because you know you're going to have opposition. Or when someone attacks you or threatens you or bullies you, publicize that. Uh, show people uh, what you're out there doing, what you're fighting for. It actually wins people over to the cause because why would somebody who's normal allow someone to insult them and hurt them, you know, say hurtful things to them or maybe sp- try to spit on them if it wasn't something that was meaningful, if it, if it wasn't something that you know was going to ultimately save lives and change our culture. Uh, we have been tracking at Students for Life free speech um, violations, we call them, for ever since we were, you know, launched uh, 15 years ago. Uh, We've been uh, tracking uh, assaults, uh, vandalization, cyberbullying, and I have to say, it has never been as bad as it currently is right now in America. I think a lot of it's you know, students were in school full time last year in person. Now they are. You have everything that's going on in our election and our culture. And it kind of comes to a head on college campuses. And wow, there is a lot going on. I mean, I there the list is so long. Not a day goes by right now at Students for Life that we are not contacted by a student group, a student leader somewhere in the country who's being cyberbullied, who's being denied their freedom to start a pro-life group or host event, who isn't being counter-protested, where flyers um, for pro-life events aren't being taken down. Take, for example, Uh, St. Louis University, a Catholic school, the vandalization that the Students for Life group uh, saw for their cemetery, their annual Cemetery of Innocence. I mean, they've been doing this forever. Um, it wasn't new. The insults when our when our team member Lucy, our regional coordinator, actually wanted to support our students for life group, was threatened. Someone threatened to kill her um, for simply having a memorial to infants who were killed via abortion. That's it at a Catholic school. Students at a Catholic high school in San Francisco recently all boycotted and walked out of school when uh, a speaker, Megan Allman from Life Training Institute, was set to speak at a Catholic school. I'm sorry. If you're a pro-choice parent, you've chosen to pay the Catholic school to educate your children. So sometimes a little bit of Catholicism and Catholic beliefs might slip in there. If you don't want that, send them to public school. Students at, um, oh, another Catholic school. Gosh, Loyola Marymount just hosted a fundraiser for Planned Parenthood in, in at Los Angeles. Don't get me started about the horror stories uh, that, that I've heard about Loyola Marymount. I was just talking to a young woman whose uh, brother goes to a school there, is majoring in film, and one of his freshman projects was helping with senior project, and it was a pornographic film. 
unbelievable. Uh, University of San Diego, where I just spoke at, a Catholic school, protests, organized protests. The school actually denied the students for life group the ability to hold, I think it was like a pro-life walk um, on campus. They said that, you know, they, they couldn't get the right to assemble because it's a private school. Uh, private schools, there's not the same constitutional rights as a public school. Uh, school, public campus, but yet the non-sanctioned, non-deficial pro-abortion group got a right to protest my speech. University of Texas, San Antonio, where they have a very active Students for Life group, um, they they have seen a spiraling of aggressive behavior towards their pro-life events. Um, there was a confrontation there that, that resulted in threats of violence. Um, actually, the threats of violence were actually in front of one of the administration, administrative officials. Uh, a woman was actually harmed, was hit um, by a, one of these pro-abortion protesters. I mean, it is unbelievable. Gonzaga University. Like I said, I just like, I, I don't even have a full list here. I'm just off the top of my head. Gonzaga University, the president of the Students for Life group, after the pro-choice group came out to protest uh, the event that Students for Life helped them hold, the Gonzaga pro-life president's house was toilet paper. I mean, these stories go on and on and on. And, and my point of, of relaying them to you isn't to um, how, you know, make you call into question, should I really hold this pro-life event? Maybe I should back off. My point is you persevere anyway, because that is what we are called to do. And we know freedom is not free. We have to constantly fight for it. And if you don't fight for your right to exist on your campus, for your right to speak out, to host an event, to do something peacefully, to, you know, have a conversation about something that ends a life of 2,300 children every single day, then you're going to lose that right very soon. And so we have to speak out and we're called to speak out. And it's easy for us to speak out because we know what we're doing saves lives. It's worth it for us, even when it's hard. So how do we win this week? By continuing to speak out, speak out for truth. The abortion always ends a life of unique cold living human being that's never existed before and will never exist again and harms women and families. Speak out for that truth and be relentless. Be unapologetic and be courageous. Hey.